Alrighty guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Jake, and today I'm actually going to be doing a requested video with a guest. He's probably not going to stick around for very long. I'm doing a requested video that was just asked last night, and I figured I would throw something together today. They asked what my opinions are so far on the 4790K. Now, today I'm pretty much bringing you that, so I'm doing a comparison between the 3770K and the 4790K by Intel. Okay, so real quick I'm going to do a Cinebench test, and the first thing that I noticed with the 4790K is the Cinebench results. Now, the first time I ran this test, I got a lower score than the 3770K, which made no sense whatsoever, which is which I'm alright with, but it still confused me a fair amount. So I'm going to go ahead and run the CPU render test. Now, this is a 4-core... 8-thread CPU at 4 gigahertz right now. We're running 64-bit. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the temperatures. We are kicking up quite a bit, and that is how this Cinebench works. It brings up the temp while it's full rendering. Now, that's a little high. 90 degrees Celsius is a little high, but at the same time, I just installed the CPU three days ago or two days ago, and the Arctic Silver that's in there takes... 72 hours to cure fully before you can expect real, real solid temperatures that are going to hold instead of things that will fluctuate like that. So this is almost done here. The 3770K was a little slower, but the first time I ran it, the 3770K actually got a better score. Now before we go over to the scores real quick, um, the 3770K was overclocked from 3.5 to 4.1 gigahertz. The 4790K, which is in here right now, is not overclocked. We are still sitting at 4.0 gigahertz in there. I might upgrade it very, very soon, or overclock it, but at this current point in time, I haven't. So when we go over to the score, right here, this is my test. The one right above this one is actually mine as well. The 4790K gets a rendering score of 863 points with the GTX 760s, etc, etc, etc. That's me right there. The 4790K above is also me right there. I ran that one this morning. The 99.62% match. Now if we go down, here's the 4770K at 822 points, and then the 3770K, which was my score, at 777 points. That is at 3.5 gigahertz. When I ran the overclock for the 3770K, or when I ran the test, it was at 4.1, and that obviously didn't do much of a change. Yet the 4790K come back at 4.0 instead of 4.1 and kicked the 3770Ks. So I really upgraded processor simply because I knew that the Ivy Bridge 3770K in April of next year is most likely going to be a little outdated. It's still a fantastic chip, very easy to overclock, very easy to maintain a stable overclock for that matter, 4.1 from 3.5, and at the same time, it's good. Now, when I went to the 4790K, this was a $250 processor as opposed to a $330 processor. Now, that seems a little shocking, but that's because the Z77 chipset, like I had on the other Gigabyte motherboard, is older. So the prices are starting to stay in the mid-range for people who really want server um, CPUs more than anything because they're quad-core Eight threads. Now that doesn't mean much because the 4790K is the exact same thing, but there was no visual increase in performance gaming wise that I saw between these two processors. Rendering time was something different because of Cinebench and because of Premiere Pro. I took the exact same video and the exact same video files the exact same project file and rendered them with the 3770K first before I switched out the system and then the 4790K afterward. The 3770K rendered the 13 minute video in 11 minutes. The 4790K rendered the 13 minute video in 8 minutes. So there is noticeable improvement 
but again, that's with no overclock. This is a 4.0 base clock and a 3.5 base clock. Now, if you guys are the type of people who like to bench their things outside of the box before you put them in the case, you can, you can always get some benefits from the Intel graphics. The 4790K has HD 4600. Now, the 3770K has HD 4000. So not to say that you can run high quality benchmarks or games off of that, but you can easily plug it into the system, go to your BIOS, enable the onboard graphics, and then from there you can still have 1080p and HD and watch everything in good, clear resolution without your graphics card if you are waiting for it to come in the mail. Now when we want to go to actual architecture, it's the same architecture. It really, really is. And when I say that, I mean they're both quad-core processors. I'm not going to go into nanometers. But they're both quad-core processors, and they both have eight threads, and they both, both have hyper-threading. So they're essentially both octo-core processors. Now, they both have eight megs of cache. There is no difference in cache whatsoever, but each one has a different base clock. 4.0, 3.5. They both have different integrated graphics. And then they also have different... TDP. So the 3770K sits at 77 watts in their thermal design power. Now the 4790K sits at 88 watts. Yes, it's more, but it requires more because of the performance output that it generally gives. So there are some drawbacks between the i7, which is pretty much, or the 4790K, which is the power consumption. Now for this one, the operating frequency is lower at 3.5 instead of 4.0 and it lacks some instructions. Now for a while I didn't think I was actually going to go for the 4790K upgrade but what really changed my mind was looking at how cheap it was at Micro Center with a motherboard. I actually saved about 70 bucks which is a pretty good deal. I got this and the motherboard for less than 400 bucks. Now, of course, I, could, I didn't need to upgrade. I did not need to upgrade at all. The only thing was that I knew that the 3770K would become outdated once Broadwell releases. Now, Broadwell is a completely different chipset. It's not Haswell, it's not Ivy Bridge, it's not Sandy Bridge, it's not Devil's Canyon, it's Broadwell. Now, of course, the only fear about that is that maybe I should have waited and I should have gone with X99. But when I stuck with the Z97, that gives me some potential to stick with a Broadwell chip when it comes out, but yet I don't have to because I have a new processor, or a relatively new processor, that will still kick some serious ash, and that I don't need to upgrade until this baby comes close to being outdated. Now the 4790K has that base clock of 4.0. With that, it has a turbo boost speed of 4.5 overclockable to probably 5 with air coolers and a lucky chip could get you 5.5 on water cooling. The 3770K does offer a decent overclock. I overclocked from 3.5 to 4.1 and that was pretty stable. That was still at a decent temperature. Now I didn't expect that. I expected it to get pretty hot. But yet this baby stays cooler at the same time without any overclock at 4.0. I'm not to say that I won't overclock it and that won't therefore give it a higher heat output, but at this current point in time, since it's clocked at 4.0, it does everything better than the 3770K. So the last thing I'm gonna get to is, do I recommend upgrading from the 3770K to the 4790K if you have the money um, if, you're, if you feel like your system isn't doing well enough and it's not pushing well enough, by all means, upgrade. I did not notice any gaming performance, so don't expect any such performance at all. Maybe, maybe 5%, but all the games are going to be mostly, mostly dependent on your GPU. So don't expect frame rate increases or any of that, unless you're running an AMD card in which case you might be able to support Mantle. That's the only, only situation where it really comes out on top. So guys, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to do a requested video for why I like the 4790K over the 3770K. It's 
basically because it's faster and because I needed something else that would be, be for uh, better render times. Not to say 3770K isn't a great chip because it's, it is great, it was great, and my parents are going to have it in their build now, which is going to be great for them because they have a really crappy computer uh, at this current point in time. So that's really it. So thanks for watching, guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, stay tuned for more videos. This is actually my third video in like two days, which is awesome. You can find the unboxing of the motherboard on my channel here above my head. And you guys can find the actual B-roll that I tried to do with this tripod of the full build um, right here next to my face. So again, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. What are you doing to me? What are you doing? What what are you what are you doing? What what are you what are you Zeus? Zeus, what are you doing? Zeus, what are you doing? Zeus? Zeus, where are you? What are you doing? Hello? Oh god. Oh god! Hello? Thank you for watching. Please don't peck at my eyeballs! <laughs>